welcome to Worship at St. Mary by the Sea today. Today we finish our Faces of Our Faith series. And today we read a letter between Philemon and Paul. Uh, Paul's imprisoned and writes to Philemon about a former escaped slave who Paul has met while in prison and who has become a Christian. Paul exhorts Philemon to extend love and grace to this former slave, Onimaeus receiving him as he would anyone else, and he argues for him to be seen as a brother, not as a slave. Paul promises to make right any debts or payments owing to Philemon, so Onimaeus can truly be free. We follow this with the well-known story of the prodigal son, where the son who runs away comes back aware of his mistakes, expecting to be punished but welcomed warmly, his sins forgiven, back into the family, and we see the resentment of the older brother coming out. How often do we see people as not quite as good as us because of their former lives or choices? Do we warmly welcome and accept the people that can be transformed by faith and healing? There are so many stories, so many people who have gone before, so many faces, named and unnamed, each generation passing their faith to the next in worship, in prayer, in community, in acts of holy disobedience. We give thanks for the gift of story that reveals what is true. We are welcomed, we are loved, we belong. We can be brave. Let us worship our God together.
come to you, knowing that we don't always reflect your love. We confess mistakes, missed opportunities, hurtful comments and actions that harm. Sometimes we don't see you. Sometimes we don't listen. Sometimes we don't even bother to look. We are sorry. Help us to see in each moment a chance to see you in our lives. Help us to see in each person a chance to see you in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Know this to be true. We are loved. We are forgiven. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Amen. Jesus said, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. May God open our hearts and minds to the needs of those around us. Reading from Philemon From Paul, who is in jail for serving Christ Jesus, and from Timothy, who is like a brother because of our faith. Philemon, you work with us and are very dear to us. This letter is to you and to the church that meets in your home. It is also to our dear friend Aphia and Archippus, who serves the Lord as we do. I pray that God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ will be kind to you and will bless you with peace. Philemon, each time I mention you in, the pre- in my prayers, I thank God. I hear about your faith in our Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. As you share your faith with others, I pray that they may come to know all the blessings Christ has given us. My friend, your love has made me happy and has greatly encouraged me. It has also cheered the hearts of God's people. Christ gives the courage to tell you what to do, but I would rather ask you to do it simply because of love. Yes, as someone in jail for Christ, I beg you to help on Emmaus. He is like a son to me because I led him to Christ here in jail. Before, he was useless to you, but now he is both useful to you and to me. I am sending on Emmaus back to you, and it makes me very sad. I would like to keep him here with me, where he could take your place in helping me while I am here in prison for preaching the good news. But I won't do anything unless you agree to it first. I want your act of kindness to come from your heart and not to be something you feel forced to do. Perhaps Onimaeus was taken from you for a little while so you could have him back for good but not as a slave. Onimaeus is much more than a slave. To me he is a dear friend but to you he is even more both as a person and as a follower of the Lord. If you consider me a friend because of Christ, then welcome on Emmaus as you would welcome me. If he has cheated you or owes you anything, charge it to my account. With my own hand I write, I, Paul, will pay you back. But don't forget you owe me your life. My dear friend and follower of Christ, our Lord, please cheer me up by doing this for me. I am sure you will do all I have asked, and even more. Please get a room ready for me. I hope your prayers will be answered, and I can visit you. Ephraim is also here in jail for being a follower of Christ Jesus. He sends his greetings, and so do Mark, Atreus, Demas, and Luke, who work together with me. I pray that the Lord Jesus will be kind to you. Luke Chapter 15 Jesus told them yet another story. Once a man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Give me my share of the property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Not long after that, the younger son packed up everything he owned and left for a foreign country where he wasted all his money in wild living. He spent everything. When a bad famine spread through the whole land, Soon he had nothing to eat. He went to work for a man in that country, and the man sent him out to take care of his pigs. 
He would have been glad to eat what pigs were eating, but no one gave him a thing. Finally he came to his senses and said, My father's workers have plenty to eat, and here I am starving to death. I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. The younger son got up and started back to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. He ran to his son, hugged him and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Hurry and bring the best clothes and put them on him. Give him a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Get the best calf and prepare it so we can eat and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, but now he has come back to life. He was lost and now he has been found. And they began to celebrate. The older son had been out in the field. But when he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing, so he called one of the servants over and asked, What's going on here? The servant answered, Your brother has come home safe and sound, and your father ordered us to kill the best calf. The older brother got so angry that he would not even go into the house. His father came out and begged him to go in. But he said to his father, For years I have worked for you like a slave, and I have always obeyed you, but you have never even given me a little goat so that I could have dinner for my friends. This son of yours wasted your money on prostitutes. And now that he has come home, you ordered the best calf to be killed for a feast? His father replied, My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we should be glad and celebrate. Your brother was dead, but now he was alive. He was lost, and now he has been found. Sarah R. has done the heart work, my very heart. And she says this of Philemon. I am sending him who is my heart back to you. That's Philemon 1 verse 12. She says this. These are strong words to describe another. Words saturated in love and hope. Words saturated in connection and promise. Paul writes these words to Philemon, a dear friend and co-worker, about Philemon's runaway slave, Onimaeus. In ancient Israel, almost anyone could become a slave, and nearly 30 to 40 percent of the population were enslaved. Slaves were treated poorly, like property, and they could be killed for running away. However, somewhere along the way, Paul meets Onimaeus. Philemon's runaway slave and chooses not to view him by his status alone or as a criminal for having run away, but as a son. However, somewhere along the way, Paul meets Onimaeus, Philemon's runaway slave, and chooses not to view him by his status alone or as a criminal for having run away, but as a son. Paul pushes and challenges his readers to see the full humanity of Onimaeus. Paul does not do this perfectly. Still blinded by the societal structures of the day, but he does take big steps towards justice here. Steps towards equality and love. And we are called to do the same. In what ways are we being like Philemon? Ignoring social change we could help enact. In what ways could we be like Paul, bending, step by step, the social arc of society towards equality and justice for all? In what ways could we do better? Sarah concludes with this. I am starting to believe that Paul was onto something, that maybe all justice work might begin by believing that others can carry our hearts. Philemon 1.12 
I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. If you have a Bible handy, read through Paul's letter once again to Philemon. Noting each time he expresses an ethic of love above law. What do you think it looks like to live out an ethic of love above law in your own life? In the Roman Empire, to accept a runaway or delinquent slave back to home without punishment was nothing short of absurd, and to accept him back as a beloved brother would have provoked a significant amount of social sacrifice and shame. What does Paul risk by sending this request? Imagine that Paul's letter is addressed to the modern-day church. Who are the Onimaeuses in Almas? Who are the ones deemed useless or delinquent, who instead need to be welcomed back into the beloved community? Think of a moment for yourselves. Who, for you, should be the person of endearment? Who is God calling you to be endeared to? Who is God calling you to welcome? Let us pray. May we have the courage to welcome home all who are enslaved in our midst. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for unconditional welcome. You have met us where we are, and we are thankful. Thank you for scripture which reveals, challenges, and inspires us. Help us to listen to your words. And we pray for our country in the aftermath of the election. May good sense, calm heads, and wisdom prevail. May all work for the good of our whole country, not just the privileged few. And we pray for those who are sick, lonely and afraid. Help us to show love and compassion. And we pray for those who live in places of war and violence. We particularly uphold the conflict between Israel and Palestine and pray for peaceful and diplomatic resolution there. We also pray for the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. We pray for the withdrawal of Russian forces. God of peace, be present in those places. And as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May we be gentle with ourselves, remembering that we are created in the image of God. May we be gentle with others, remembering that they too are created in the image of God. May we go into the world with honesty and thanksgiving, embracing tears, laughter, and all that is good. May the protection of God comfort us. May the courage of Jesus sustain us. May the tenderness of the Spirit embrace us. Amen.